high paying jobs are always available on the upper platform they are posted on a daily basis and guess what clients are longing for us as freelancers to impress them with our proposals they want us to win those jobs because they want to recruit the best and qualifying freelancers but freelancers as we all know we mostly focus on the competition we are so emerged sucked in and defeated by the competition we just want to compete we just want to submit proposals for the sake of submitting proposal instead of focusing on the things that actually will impress the client so that the clients can give us the job as freelancers we need to focus on the things that are really really important the things that matter the things that can get you to win that job that you normally long for and what are those things the first thing is your ability to spot lucrative jobs as a freelancer you have to master the skill of spotting lucrative job the second thing is your ability to master the skills of winning those jobs and that requires you to impress the client so how do you impress the client that's the question and that is exactly what we are going to answer in this video i have put together three significant steps that you need to understand the last step is the killer step because there i will demonstrate all of the other steps that i've discussed because i will show you exactly how to write proposals that can impress the clients on the first go now before we talk about the principles that will make you a magnet to attract high paying jobs i want to ask you to do one thing nobody can make you a magnet for high paying jobs it is you as an individual you have to make yourself a magnet for high paying job you have to embrace these principles that i'm going to discuss because there is no way you can become a magnet to high paying jobs if you don't embrace and internalize this principle and then hold yourself accountable that i am going to abide to this principle no matter what i want to make sure that i keep myself to a high standard that's one thing that most freelancers don't want to do they don't want to keep themselves to high standard they don't want to hold themselves accountable but if you are really serious and you want to set yourself aside you want to set yourself apart you want to be one of those freelancers that when a client come across you they are impressed they are excited to work with you then let's go into this principle the first principle is your ability to spot lucrative jobs i want to talk about this a little bit now most people when they think that when they say a lucrative job they just think about the rates that they are going to be paid however there is more to it than just the rates or how much the job is paying there are certain things that you have to think about and those are the things that i want us to go into and really talk about the first thing you have to check for high paying jobs or high value jobs you have to make sure that the client is verified their phone number is verified their um and payments is verified on upwork this is really important this is like fundamental number 2 the job has to be more than 6 months or 6 months plus the length of the job has to be 6 months plus number 3 the job has to be 30 hours plus now most people neglect these things but they are really important because if you want to create predictable and reliable income you have to make sure that your job that you are applying for is 30 hours plus next look at the hourly rates of the job now there are three things you have to consider when it comes to the hourly rate number 1 look at what the client is really asking for whether it is commensurate to what the rate is so for example if the client says this job they are going to pay $5 and they are demanding value from you as a freelancer that is worth $20 or $30 per hour then that is a questionable job that's a red flag the next thing you have to look when it comes to the rate is how much value are you going to provide 
and what level of experience do you have that's the third thing okay so the second thing is how much value are you going to provide to this job so you have to think about this if this job is asking me to provide value that is worth for a job that pays me at a rate of $30 per hour and the person is saying I should work for $5 per hour, then that is a red flag for me. And also, I'll look at my experience, right? If I am just somebody who is beginning on Upwork, I am really new to the platform and I just want to build my reputation for now, then you will also see how your, that rate works. You can work for $5. Even if the value that you are providing is $10, you can still work for $5 because you want to build your repetition. So you have to look those three things. What value the client is calling for? What value do you think you are going to provide and how much that value worth? And also what kind of experience you have? The next thing is the history of the client. So you have to check what kind of history does this client has? What do I mean by this? Does the client have a rich history that shows what kind of feedback that the client is providing to other clients, to other freelancers? Does the client um, has a history that shows the feedback that freelancers are providing to this client? Some clients never provide feedback and I will not want to work for a client who does not provide feedback because at the end of the day, I want to work for this client and then they provide me a positive feedback that can help build my repetition. You see what I mean? So if the client has worked with multiple other freelancers and they have not provided any feedback and they just leave these um, freelancers hanging, for me, that is a red flag. I have to be very careful because at the end of the day, Upwork is a very competitive platform. Therefore, repetition is king. You have to know this. So you have to look for this. The next thing that is really important that you need to pay attention to when it comes to spotting a lucrative job is the average pay rate of the client. So let's say this is not a new client. This is a client that has been on the platform for a while. They've hired a couple of freelancers. You have to check the average rate. How much, what is the average rate that they are paying? This is important. I am going to talk about this more at a later section of this video because I want you to understand the psychology behind this average rates because it can either make or break your proposal. The next principle is customizing and tailoring your proposal. Many freelancers make this huge mistake. They think that they can just brush up this part and just submit any proposal anyhow. If you want to attract high paying jobs and you want to stand out, you want to impress clients at the first time they see your proposal, you need to learn how to tailor your proposals. And for this, as you are seeing on the screen, this is a client who got back to me after I submitted a proposal. And this is the proposal. Do you see how I showed the client the, my expertise in terms of the tools of the trade. And also, do you see what I bring to the table? How I organize my thoughts about what I will bring to the table? Then, now look at what the client said, the message that the client sends to me. You can see that the client is very specific. He, he specifically says that they are very happy about the clarity of what I am going to bring to the table. All right? This is a clear example of how you write a proposal that stands out. But not just standing out, it's about articulating the needs of the client. You have to understand the pain points and it begins by reading the job adverts of the client. When the client advertises a job, don't just brush on the job and then go and submit a proposal. You don't want to be like a generalist. Don't behave like a generalist. You are not a generalist. You are an expert and you want to stand out. So what do you do? You try to identify the pain points of the client and then you coin your proposals to solve those pain points. Show the client what you are bringing to the table. Let the client know that you are different. You are adding value to their business. Then that can give you an edge. Even if your rate is the highest for that job, the client will be happy to send an invite because they want to talk to you. That is the secret. There is nothing more to it. You have to make sure your proposals are tailored according to the pain points that the clients are looking for. And some clients are really good at describing their problems. The next principle is 
separating yourself from the generalist. I have mentioned this in the previous principle briefly. You have to separate yourself from the generalist. What does that mean? There are freelancers on this platform that just apply for every and each and every job. They just apply for any job they see. They want to apply. They want to be the first to submit their proposals. It is good. It's not a bad thing for you to submit your proposal early. All right. But what I'm saying is, as a freelancer who wants to attract high paying jobs, you have to hold yourself to a high standard as well, because you have to hold yourself accountable that I want to make sure when I send my proposal, I want the client to be impressed. So what do you do? The number one thing you have to do is to niche down. That's the first thing. So what does that mean? You don't have to be jack of all trade. Most people, their specialization is too broad. They want to apply for too many jobs. So niching down means that if you are a project manager, for instance, you cannot be a project manager for every project. You can be a project manager for cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies. When you niche down, then what you do? You skill up. That's the strategy. You niche down and then skill up. So if I am a project manager for cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies, then what I need to do is I need to increase my skill level on these technologies. I need to make sure that I provide a portfolio that showcase my project management skills in these particular areas. As well as when I am writing my proposal, I need to show the kind of experience I have in this particular domain. Now, if you and somebody who is a generalist, who is just a PM, you apply for a job for so that's where the client is looking for a cryptocurrency specialized PM, you will stand a chance to win that job because you'll be able to provide more value and the client will appreciate you more. This is what I mean by you, what? Niching down and then you skill up, all right? That's how it works. So now Upwork has made it very easy. How? They have allowed you to create multiple specializations. So you can actually look to tailor your specialization into specific niche. So let's say you decide to create like three specializations. So you can create like three profile that shows your different specializations. If you are good at cryptocurrency, make sure you create a, a, a specialization on that. If you are good at managing and um, projects that are health related, your PM experience is on that domain you make sure you create a specialization for that. Even though you are a PM, but you have this specialization within the PM domain. This is really important. And if you do that, you will see that high paying clients will love to come to you and they will love to hear from you. And then you will kill those interviews. Now, the last but not the least thing is the psychology of pricing. Now, most people or most freelancers make the mistake, they think that they can just put any rates when it comes to um, freelancing. They can just put any rates of what they think of. But actually there is a psychology. Now the first thing that you have to think about is look at the average rates of this client. So you look at what the client is currently paying as their average rates for all the jobs that they have. That is the first thing, you look at the average um, rate. The second thing is you look at the, the roles that the client is currently as recruited on the platform. Go over these roles, look at each of the role, how much is the client offering for each of these roles. So once you see that, if your role is a management role, is a higher role than most of these roles, then it is okay for you to put a rate that is above the average rate. But if your role is below the roles that the client has recruited and you've seen what kind of rates that the client is happy to pay previous freelancers, then it is wise for you to look at how you can bring down your rate. Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you are within the rate wherein the client is happy to recruit. And when you submit your proposal, even if your proposal is top notch, the client will still be skeptical to recruit you if your rate is way above their comfortable zone. So you have to look at the psychology. And the best way to look at this is look at the average rates, look at the rates that the client has been paying, observe the roles that they have been recruiting, and then look at your role. If your role is more senior, then you can raise your rate. If your role is more junior, then you have to reduce your rate so that when you apply, the client will be happy to invite you for that job. You go for that interview and kill that interview. And 
I want to appreciate you for watching up to this hour and see you on the next one.